Hi, George here. Let's talk about layer masks. Now, I use layer masks in almost every single project that I do. They are very, very useful. But in case you're new to my channel here or you haven't done very many of these videos, let's just go over everything. This is also a good refresher course if you've been doing layer masks for a while. I'll be mentioning a few things that you may not have seen before. First off, a layer mask looks like this over here, except it's not crossed out. Let me just enable that layer mask. There we go. As you can see, what a layer mask does is it hides part of the image allowing anything below to show through. Right now we're seeing this background image through the hole and the hole is that black area in that layer mask. And that allows you to cut out part of a picture without actually removing that part of the picture, which makes it very easy then to go back and edit, make changes, adjustments, whatever you like. Right now the layer mask is selected. That's this light blue outline over here. If I double click on this side, the image is selected. Double click over here, the layer mask is selected. If you right click right on the layer mask itself, you get just a few options. You can disable the layer mask, like that is just temporarily hidden. Right click and enable. You can delete the layer mask. If you apply the layer mask, it's going to merge these two together and it would be just like I had come in here and used an eraser. I'll go ahead and show you that. Apply a layer mask. It just does that for you. Sometimes that's useful, but most of the time not. I use the control Z keyboard shortcut to back out of that. Right click again. You can add the mask to a selection or subtract the mask from a selection. And what that means is it makes a selection again. Right there, there's your selection right around that edge of that layer mask. I use control D to deselect that one. Okay, so let's see how we can make a layer mask. I'm just gonna delete this one, right click and delete. There we are. Now to put a layer mask on here, real easy, just click this button right there and that gives you a layer mask. That's the add layer mask button. Or I'll do control Z, undo that one. Go over here to layer. You can come down here and add a layer mask right here. Do I reveal all layer mask? This is a white layer mask. Hide all is a black layer mask. So there's our white layer mask. Now anything that's black on here is going to be hiding something from your image. So I'll just grab a paintbrush here, bring my size up quite a bit, good size brush. I have black as my color. And if I paint on here with this black, it's going to show me anything in that area. It basically makes a hole in your image and you're seeing whatever's in behind. In this case, that's that background layer. So pretty easy to do that. You can actually hand paint a layer mask if you want to, but there are easier ways to do this. There we go. Let's just control Z and back out of all that nonsense. There we are. You can put shapes onto a layer mask. This is kind of fun. I'll grab a shape tool over here. Let's go to our custom shapes and I'll grab the dog print right here. Make a big dog print just like that. Now notice that this comes in on a new layer. Now if you don't want this to happen, you want the shape that you're doing on the layer mask itself, you can actually do that. I'm just going to delete this, get rid of that shape one. Come down to the layer mask side, look for your light blue outline, hold the Alt key down and click on the layer mask. This takes you inside of the layer mask. Now if we draw our shape like that, the shape is now on the layer mask. Go to a different layer, we then see that layer mask right there. We're now seeing through that layer mask. So you can put shapes right on a layer mask. You just have to go inside the layer mask first to do it with that Alt key. Okay, control Z to back out of that one. You can also do gradients on a layer mask. This is kind of fun. I have black in front, white in back. I have my gradient tool. Now, as you've seen, black hides. It hides whatever's on your image and white shows whatever's on your image. So if I grab the standard linear gradient right here, I'll go over here, left-hand side, hold the shift key down so this pulls a straight gradient like that. Right-hand side, let go. This puts a gradient onto the layer mask. So I'm now seeing the full image over here and no image over here left-hand side. If you want to, you can be more careful about that so that wherever you stop, you get the full image past that point. And wherever you let go, you get a different image in behind. It's kind of hard to see that. Let's just change our background, make this real obvious. I grab something that's not the same color as our background to begin with. Let's just grab this red over here. This should do it. There we go. So you can see now how the green it up here is allowing this side to show and it's hiding that side. So we see the background over here. That's a real fun way to blend layers together. And I use control Z to back out of that. There we go. Now an easy way to make a layer mask is to make a selection. Let's get rid of this layer mask. I'll just right click and hit delete layer mask. There we go. Let's now grab a marquee tool up here. I have the elliptical marquee tool selected. And I'll just pull an ellipse around our subject. And then if you hit the add layer mask button, it makes a layer mask based upon that selection. And the fun thing about this is if I put layer styles onto this, they actually match that layer mask. 
Go over here to Layer. Let's come down to Layer Style, Style Settings. I'll just put a stroke on this one. And you can see how the stroke goes around the shape of the layer mask. And that's occasionally a real useful trick to do. I'll just cancel that one out. And let's get rid of this layer mask. Delete that one. There we go. A standard thing with the layer mask is you want to remove a background and just show your foreground with a different background. That's what I had at the beginning of the video. Let me show you that one. It's actually very easy to do. If you're in a more modern version of Photoshop Elements, just go up here to Select and choose Subject. And it does that for you. It selects your subject. If you're in an earlier version, then use one of your standard selection tools like your polygonal lasso tool or the regular lasso tool and make a careful selection around your subject. I'll do the same thing. Now notice that the select subject didn't give us the table. We can fix that easily enough. I'm on that polygonal lasso tool and come down here. I'll set this at add to selection and I'll just make a new selection around the table. We'll start right here. I'll be inside of the selection and I'll pull a line over here to the corner, down to this corner, straight down, outside across the bottom. Let's come in right here, this little notch bit there and up to that corner, back to this corner straight across and then we're near your beginning double click and we now have added the table into our selection now notice up here that she has some thin hairs out there we need to fix those thin hairs and the way you do that with selections is use the refine edge now i've gone into detail on a couple of videos previously here about the right settings for getting hair like this doing a real good job on that what i usually do is hit the smart radius and i'll do a radius of around 10 or 15 i'll do 15 this time Leave everything else alone and then just paint right over that edge where those thin hairs are and on this side as well and that's really all you need to do everything else was fine and then i'll put this to a new layer with layer mask or just a layer mask i already have my new layer so i'll just choose layer mask choose okay there's my layer mask and you can see we got those thin hairs very nicely in there it looks perfect so again the same basic concept we made a selection and we converted that selection into a layer mask. And once we have our layer mask, let's go over here, left hand side layer, and come down to layer mask. And we can delete or apply. We've already seen those with the right mouse button. We also have disable and unlink. We've seen disable. That's just the same thing as right click and disable. But that unlink thing, that's over here. That's this little link right there. Normally your layer mask is linked to the image side of your layer. So if I grab my move tool here and I move this around, the layer mask moves with the image, which allows me to just position this someplace else like that. And I keep that layer mask in here. Now, sometimes not here, obviously, but sometimes you may want to not have that happen. If I unclick this, I can then move the layer mask or the image, I double click on the image side, move the image around. I'm now moving the image around without moving that layer mask. So they're now unlinked. I'll use Control Z to put this back in place again, and then I'll relink that. Again, sometimes that's really useful. If you do a layer mask and you want to move your image around in behind the layer mask, this is a real nice trick for that. Now you are able to edit your layer mask over here even after it's been made. Simply paint white or black on your layer to adjust your layer mask. Let's say I wanted to get rid of this white area over here. It's not causing me any problems on this particular image, but it may want to do that. I'll just grab the paint bucket. I'll Click over here at the paint bucket that fills that area with black. There we go. I've now extended that layer mask over to that edge. I could come in here with a paintbrush and paint in again on the layer mask like that. You can actually paint out areas on a layer mask with black paint or I'll reverse my colors and I can paint areas back in again with white paint. So you can go back and forth and actually paint onto the layer mask to make adjustments. Let's just do the control Z to back out of that. Sometimes I'll do this if I'm not really sure exactly where the edge is on something and I want to see that edge and be more careful about that. Let's just zoom in here. And the subject select got this just fine, so no problem. But sometimes it doesn't work. In that case, I might do this where I can see my edge. I'll then come in here and I'll make a very careful selection using any of my favorite selection tools. I tend to like this polygonal lasso tool most of the time. It's my personal favorite. I'll do a careful selection right along that edge and take it down to where I re-showed the background image and out and around like this close to the beginning double click I can now take my paintbrush set my foreground color to black 
and then paint in here right along that edge. And there we go, Control D to deselect. And that has repaired that part of that image using either black or white right on the layer mask side. Now you can get trickier on this stuff if you want to. Let's say I wanted to have this image like this where the background is cut out and I wanted to have her fade out at this left hand side. I can't do both of those on the one layer mask. If I was in Adobe Photoshop, I could because in Adobe Photoshop, you can add a second layer mask over here and do tricks like that. You can do a vector-based layer mask. We can't do that in Elements, but there are workarounds for this. Let me show you that. I'm going to right-click on this layer. Let's duplicate the layer. Choose OK. I'll hide this one. That's my safety on my layer mask. Go up to here. Right-click on the layer mask. Apply your layer mask. So we now have the image cut out like we want it. We can now make a new layer mask over here. New layer mask. Let's go back to our gradient tool. And same thing. Notice that I'm on the layer mask side. With the shift key down, pull this in a little ways. And you can see down here where the table is. We've now faded that part of the table out with this new layer mask. So you can kind of double up to a two-stage process. And in essence, getting two layer masks onto one layer. Let's hide this layer, bring this one back up again. One more thing you can do with your layer mask is to work on the edge by either adding in contrast or you can blur it out or bring it back in again. Let me show you a blur first. Choose a layer mask here. Go up to filter, come down to blur. There's the Gaussian blur. If I bring the blur up, you can see here that the layer mask is getting blurred. So you can actually blur out a layer mask and it gives you kind of a soft edge on things. Occasionally a very interesting effect. Let's just cancel that one. You also can blur out an edge or sharpen an edge by using your blur or sharpen tools right over here. There's the blur tool right here. Here's the sharpen tool. Oftentimes you can get a better edge if you sharpen that up a little bit. Or you can get a better edge if you increase the contrast or decrease the contrast. You can use the burn tool here to increase or you can use the dodge tool to decrease the contrast. It's often better to look at this on just the layer mask side. So I'll hold the Alt key down again, click on the layer mask. We can now see our edge. If I zoom in on this, make the edge a little bit harder here. You can see it's a little soft on that edge right here. It's a little bit of gray showing. Bring my size down like that. And now using the dodge tool, I'll come in here and I'll lighten up the white areas in here. Just brush over this a few times and just back those out. It gives me a harder edge on that side. There we go. And if I wanted a harder edge on the dark side, I do the exact opposite. If I come in, I would switch my tools to the burn tool and come along the outside and burn on the outside of that edge. Let's look at using the paint on this. Here's the paint tool. Bring the size of the brush down real small. You need a hard edge brush for this. And I have a hard edge brush right here. Let's go here to white. I can just paint white right on the layer mask like that and paint that stuff out. I messed up a little bit right there. I can fix that in just a second. Which our colors come back in with black, paint a little bit of black right on that edge right there, and that fixes that edge. You also can come in and make selections in here and work against your selection. So here's our polygonal lasso tool. I'll make a selection right around like this, down to this edge here, down like that. Let's come out here near the beginning, double click. There's my selection edge. I'm gonna be white paint, and I can then paint right in along that edge, make a real nice clean area in there. And then control D to deselect. And then to get back out of this, just click on a different layer and you're back out. And I'll use control zero to fit screen again. So we just went back and did a real careful cleanup on that edge and that edge is now perfect. You can also use text for layer masks. This is kind of fun. Let's come down to our background layer. I'll put a new layer here above this background layer. Grab the type tool. And this came in in white. So I'm gonna double click on this. Let's change our color here to that blue. There it is, we have Dog City. If I select this, hold the Control key down, hit the text thumbnail, it makes a selection of that. I can then come in here and make a layer mask of that. And now I have Dog City as a layer mask up here. And I can then use that on something else if I wanted to. Let's get real fancy here. I'm gonna right click on the background layer. Let's duplicate that layer, choose OK. We'll come back to that in a second. Let's come down here to Graphics. Let's find something else interesting in here, something with a different color to it and with some texture on it. Maybe this thing right here that has some texture. Get back to our layers, right click on this, duplicate that layer, choose OK. Move that above this layer. So here's that texture. 
I can now go to this layer mask here, and you can actually copy layer mask or move layer masks between layers. If I take this and just drag it straight down, that moves the layer mask down to here. If I now hide that, I then have this textured pattern inside of that layer mask. I'll show you because of that layer mask. Or Control Z to undo that one. Back to our layer mask. If you hold the Alt key down, pull straight down, you can copy a layer mask. Same effect, it's just one gives us duplicates, other one just moves it. And again, because the way layer masks work, if I put a layer style on this, it will match the edge or the contour of the layer mask. Go up to the layer menu, come down to layer style, style settings. Let's just give this a bevel in here. I'll put it over that side, bring the bevel up a little bit. And it's kind of a nice rounded bevel on that. Let's put a drop shadow on that. And a little soft edge drop shadow. So you can see how you can get real fancy with text as well just by using a layer mask and a patterned layer. If you want to get my working file over here and the download link for this image that I used in this project, and also a written file about how to use layer masks, all of that stuff is available if you're a member of my channel. And the way to become a member right now is to get my Photoshop Elements Photo Coach, which is a text-based program that answers all those questions you get about how to use Photoshop Elements. It's like a super powerful help system. And I'll put a link for that right down there in the description. So if you have that, you'll then find this information inside the guides section of the photo coach. Don't forget to hit that like button. Make sure you click on subscribe if you haven't already done so. If you enjoy this video and you want to help out my channel, help me make more of these videos in the future, consider sending me a thanks. That's that thanks button right down there, bottom right-hand corner just below the video. And I'll see you next time.